At one time, someone put this stock stone in this house and I'm sure they loved it and thought it was beautiful. But for us, it's just not the vibe of our house. So we completely demoed it and built a new fireplace mantle surround and added a very classic brick finish to it. I can't wait to show you how we took this outdated fireplace and turned it into something timeless and very classic. So jumping right in to the demo, Scott first took off the old mantle, which was one of the first projects we actually did do in this house. We built that white mantle, that like floating shelf ourselves, and it was great for the time. We had it for about four years before we demoed it, and I'll be honest with you, I really wanted to demo this myself, but I was actually a month postpartum at this point with our third baby. And Scott said, heck no, you're not doing this. I don't want you to get hurt. And I was very, very bitter about this. Scott used a hammer, a chisel, and his hands to take all of this off. It was very dusty, so me and the kids were upstairs while he was doing this. Make sure you do cover anything that you don't want dust to get on and just kind of clean up as you go. Taking everything off was pretty easy because everything was attached to this paper and I want to say like it wasn't a cement board but there was like mortar, chicken wire, and this paper behind it. My camera wasn't working the best during this project, so I do apologize for any footage that might be a little blurry or the lighting might be off. At this point, my camera turned off right as Scott ripped this entire section off in one piece and he fell off the ladder and almost died. One area that we were really excited to rip up is this hearth area. It was a raised tile and it just felt like it took up so much of the space. But you can see here the wall was in pretty good shape just a few holes i had to patch and then we're going to move right into building the new surround we are using three quarter inch mdf to build the entire fireplace surround and mantle scott ripped down everything off camera to the measurements that we needed and this is gonna be one of the legs. So he is just building a box basically, but it is gonna be hollow. There is no back to this surround. He's using wood glue and nails to assemble everything. And one thing I just wanna make very clear is make sure you are getting your edges very flush. You can see how he's kind of like pushing and holding this in place because you will be able to see these seams if you don't get this flush. Also clean up any of the excess wood glue as you are going along this because you don't want to have to deal with sanding that off later. At this point I started to look at this leg and think something might be off. So we had a very heated discussion about what Scott was doing versus what I was wanting him to do. So we went inside and had to measure and relook at photos and visualize and eventually I got my way and we went with how I was wanting this to be built. This is definitely something that happens with every project we do. Once we got that taken care of, we could go into trimming out the actual legs. So we used one and a half inch strips of the MDF and just added a detail to the front. Mm -hmm. 
and then you're going to repeat that detail for all your boxes so we did have to do three for this build so two legs and then the middle top piece that the mantle will sit on and now we're assembling all of this together and you are just using again wood glue and nails and you're going to nail in through the side Once it was assembled, we got it inside and I honestly just kind of looked at it for like 20 minutes because it felt like my vision was starting to come to life. It's not attached to the wall yet. We wanted to build it up and then I did want to paint it all outside. But here Scott is adding the blocking to add the actual mantle on top of. So you can see here, we're gonna have a board for the top of the mantle, and then there's gonna be crown molding to stack it up and give it some detail. Also, Maverick had to get in on this. Just Once everything was on, it was my turn to get in on this and I started by filling all the nail holes with wood filler. And then I did move this outside to paint it. I did two coats of primer and two coats of a cabinet paint. And then to attach it to the wall, this is what we've seen a lot of other people do. You block the studs on your wall and then you nail it to the studs. Now let's get this brick on the wall. This was my favorite part to do. I got to be really creative, come up with a pattern all on my own. I just went on Pinterest, found a few different brick patterns I liked on fireplaces, and just kind of went from there. I didn't find a specific one that I loved, so I just kind of did it how I thought it would look best. I did put a piece of vinyl plank flooring underneath the first row I did because we are going to be doing new flooring after, and I didn't want to have to do a transition piece here. I also tried to use a construction glue on the metal parts at first because I heard that the mortar won't stick to metal. I did that for like two bricks and then realized that the mortar I liked better. So I ended up just using the mortar. I also used a wet tile saw to cut any of the bricks that I needed to cut. In these videos, there's not a lot of time for me to give very specific details on these projects. So I did wanna mention that I do have blog posts on every project we do, including this fireplace, that has more detailed measurements, product links, everything that you would need to do this on your own. 
If you have more questions, feel free to leave any comments below or you can go to the blog and most likely your question is gonna be answered in the blog post. One question that I got a lot when I posted this to TikTok and Instagram was by going on the metal piece of the fireplace, am I worried about having to take the fireplace out if it breaks or anything like that? And my answer honestly is this is a gas fireplace. If something was to go wrong and we did have to remove it, I know I can redo it. So I'm not worried about having to like take the brick off, that sort of stuff. brick is in and I was so excited and so proud of myself for doing this part all by myself. Now it is time to grout, which is honestly my favorite part of doing a project like this. It is so satisfying to mix up the grout to a fluffy like frosting consistency and pipe it in between here. It's like a big old cake. I did use a grout piping bag and it made it so easy to get it in between the cracks. Because I was doing a more whitewash German smear look, I did overfill the grout lines more than you would if you didn't want to smear this grout over the bricks. Once the grout starts to dry, you wanna start cleaning it all off and making your grout lines nice and smooth. I prefer just to use my fingers to make the grout lines, but they do have tools that you can use for this. Um, you will just take a damp sponge and wipe away until you get as much of the grout off as you want. I did think I was going to have this be a little more German smeared than what I ended up doing but I loved having the brick show. So I just did more of like a white wash smear versus a super heavy smear. Um, you can see here, if you liked it very, very heavy, you can just stop. You don't have to keep cleaning the bricks, but that is why I love a project like this because it's forgivable up to a certain point. You can go in and add more or take more off at this point. This is the next day and I used a sanded color matched grout caulk to fill in all these areas that you just can't get with grout. And you also want to use this here because as the house kind of shifts, this isn't going to crack. But if you did just grout in here, you would notice that it would separate. Before we get to the before and afters, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I hope you do subscribe if you like DIY and home renovation videos. We have a lot more coming up, really big projects that I can't wait to show you. But this is what this looked like before. I still cannot believe that we created this fireplace.
Thank you so much again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if this is a project that you're willing to tackle. See you on the next one.